Hello again, do-it-yourselfers. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician, coming to you live from Costa Rica. Now, we're going to do a little project here, and I'm going to be doing some projects from Costa Rica for the next couple months as I'm here looking after some business and as well joy enjoying some of the beautiful weather that uh, the Guanacaste area and the entire country, as a matter of fact, has to offer. From where I'm uh, living in in Canada, it's uh, quite a difference in degrees, probably about uh, almost 28 degrees difference in daytime highs. So here we're generally around 32 in the daytime this time of year, going down to 20-ish at night. So basically in Fahrenheit for my American friends, room temperature at night and up to about pushing 90 in the daytime. So my kind of weather. So you might be asking before I get into the project, what's the guy doing? What's the internet electrician doing traveling during a pandemic? Well, it's absolutely open here in Costa Rica. Um, they realized they're suffering with the same issues that everybody is with case numbers rising. Luckily, the, uh, the IFR rate is going down as it is everywhere else too, but the more you test, the more people are gonna have it. So they are getting uh, some concern with the, the occupancy in the hospitals getting to be overwhelming, but I think they're managing so far. And I believe it just came down to that they realize they cannot function in this economy without tourists. It's a large portion of their economy. So they've opened up. We're all being cautious. All the expats that are here and have returned year after year. Uh, I'd say maybe 25% of them are back. And we're just being very, very uh, cognizant of, of the fact that the people here kind of want to keep to their own groups and especially for the first 14 days of arriving I'm, I'm eight days in now and they just don't want us co-mingling and I understand that completely so we're going to respect that but I've got work to do here uh, we own properties down here and we have uh, maintenance that needs to be done I've got a vehicle here that needs your annual inspections and your annual licensing taken care of and to be honest I just love to be here so I love Costa Rica. In these next few videos, I'm going to share a little bit of what we have going on around here. You might be interested, and if you are, stay with me. And if you're not, just skip to the parts you need. So let's get to the light fixture that I'm going to be dealing with here, and we'll see what we have to do to fix that. But I'll show you what the problem is. So here's the issue I'm going to deal with today. I bought this strip light just last year. Now this is in our little casita, which is on a separate lot up the hill from the main home. So the main home has been doing actually quite well with VRBO rentals and such, even during the pandemic, which we're thankful for. We get a lot of Ticos, the local people that come out of the city, come out to enjoy the beach for the weekend. So we've uh, actually had pretty good, pretty good occupancy in spite of uh, the pandemic situation. So for that, like I said, we're thankful. So of course, when I'm here and when Sandy here is here with me, she's not on this trip, but when we're here and the house is occupied, we stay in a little casita, a little container home, which after the video, I'll give you a little tour of if you want to stick around for that. Um, so, but anyway, right now, this little strip light I purchased, it's uh, just an LED, like a single tube fluorescent, but it's all full of LEDs in there. And I noticed there's a couple sections out and it does flicker a little bit when I turn it on. There's a couple flickers if I tap on it. So let's take it apart, find out if there's maybe a gecko stuck in there and shorten out an LED, or if I just need to replace that fixture with another one. It was a reasonably priced fixture that I bought here at a place called the Do It Center, which is just a big home improvement center close to us. Incidentally, they also have like a Home Depot in the, in the main city. It's called EPA. EPA and they also have Costco's and Price Marts and you used to have to go to the big city for Price Mart or Costco But now we have one right near the Liberia Airport. So most convenient in another video I'm going to show you what I bought there and uh, Even in this video, I'm going to show you what I bought at, at the Costco Price Mart for my outside cabinet here So anyway, let's get started with tearing apart that fixture and like I said stick around at the end if you want And I'll give you a little tour of the casita Okay, so here's the light I'm going to investigate in today's video. Now, I'm not sure you can see it on camera, but there's a little section or two here that are darker than it should be. So I assume there's a section of LEDs out or out of place or something in here. But I'm going to take this down anyway and find out if I can uh, solve this problem. And if nothing else, I'm going to be able to clean the little bugs that have crawled into the fixture out. So let's pull it down. I, 
I put this up here last year so I know that there's just two clips that clip on either side of the fixture. And now I have to undo those wires and pull it down and see what I'm dealing with here. Okay, so here's my splices that were made up inside that tubing up in the ceiling there. We got a blue and a brown and a yellow with the green stripe for ground. Now I'm just gonna pop off the end of this fixture. I can see a little, little uh, catch there. And I see the controls are in here, the uh, LED driver. And then it looks like we got two strips of LEDs going down the length of this fixture. So I'm gonna pull this out of here and just see if my uh, suspicions are true that there is a couple sections of LEDs out of this. Looks like they just slide right out of here. You can see what I'm doing. Looks like these strips are just slid into tracks inside this fixture. Yeah. So I'm just going to get some temporary power together here and put the power to this and see if there's a section of LEDs that's actually out. And if there is, I don't think there's anything I can do about it, but what I'll do then is just clean out the little bugs that were inside my fixture housing and put it back together. So let's get some power here to this temporarily and uh, plug it in and see what we got. So what I'm doing is just taking this non-polarized male plug. I'm gonna just gonna hook the hot and the neutral to the terminals in here so that I can plug it into an extension cord to test it here. So. Just a temporary measure I'm doing here. Just to make it safer, I have, I must confess, just plugged uh, the wires right into a receptacle. <laughs> but I wouldn't show you how to do that because that's just not safe. So we're putting on a plug end here. cord cap, male cord cap, or a plug is the proper term. Two-prong non-polarized plug is this one. Just a cheap one got at the local Ferretaria, which is a hardware store. And I don't have to be awful careful about doing a great job of getting this cord end on because it's just a temporary measure here. Okay, so I've plugged it in now to an extension cord and it's kind of worse than I thought. I've got one full strip working and then about a third of the way down on the other side with two thirds are, are out. So I would, I think I paid maybe 20 bucks for this fixture and I bought it here in Costa Rica to replace the original LED fixture that, uh, that went out on me after about two months of service. So I guess uh, we're back to replacing that fixture. All right, so thanks again for watching and I'm glad you stayed around this long so you can have a little tour of my casita. This is a small 10 by 20 container home and it was actually, it's not really a shipping container, it was actually designed and built as modular housing units. And I managed to pick one up here a couple years ago. There's another long sad story about when it got shipped here, how the trucker didn't check the overhead tree branch and totally destroyed this thing so we had to rebuild it straighten the frame get some new panels amazingly we have beautiful windows in here triple e glazed pane windows that are very nice and very expensive not a window was broken but the entire casita was trashed so we uh, managed to put it all back together with the help of a good tico friend of mine jorge pareza and uh, my friend terry 2.0 we call him uh, also known as Terry Penticton, he helped out and we managed to put this thing back together and then last summer I came out here and got it all ready to be lived in. So anyhow, here we are in the bathroom where we were working on that light fixture and you can see we got everything you need in this little home, little little uh, med uh, cabinet there with a the sink and we got a medicine cabinet in there. I um, apologize, I'm batching, so uh, it's not gonna be quite as neat and tidy as if Sandy was here. She'll be horrified that I didn't clean up better showing you this, but regardless, hey, I'm a bachelor right now. So here we got a little corner shower unit, 
Uh, we don't have hot water in it yet. I was supposed to bring one down this trip, but the, uh, the item got shipped out and landed on our door as I was flying over our house leaving Vancouver Island. So next time, but however, when it's 30 degrees, a cool shower or a ground temperature shower is not a bad thing. In fact, it's quite, quite refreshing. So, and the water probably never gets any less than 75 degrees. So, and then we're all the way up to probably 80 degrees in the daytime. So, and all the lines, all the water lines are just barely run under the surface here as you don't need to uh, only protect them from damage. You don't need to get them down, of course, under the frost level like we do back home. So anyway, there we are. Little corner shower. Uh, of course, there's a, a toilet in here and sink. Try to give you a look at that over that way. So it's functional. There's a nice barn door here on it to close off the bathroom. Again, another amazing fact that that didn't get broken in the accident. And then there's a window over on this side behind me there. And yes, there's the window. And then into the main living area. So there's a small kitchenette. And all I've got is just a cooktop there and a sink, of course. And but everything you need other than a microwave. I do not have a microwave or a dishwasher, but little cooktop, two burner cooktop there. Anything I can do here or on my gas grill outside. Sink to wash dishes, cabinets there for all my food and my dishes and such. I have uh, a little pull out island here that I designed myself. So when you need more space, you just push that in. You can see my dishes are underneath there. Gives me more counter space. Got a full size fridge here, purchased right here in Costa Rica. And over here, we've got a wardrobe. And then I've got the Murphy bed against that wall. So that Murphy bed just pulls down at night, of course, gives you a full queen size bed with an excellent mattress. But up in the day for more room in here, as roomy as it is, there's my lovely painting. Try to ignore that. That was paint night here one year at Halloween. So it was just a fun night over at the Junquialico Resort. Anyway, <laughs> let's not dwell on that. There's the main entrance into the casita. My TV up there above the door, or beside the door, so I can see from bedtime. And then here is that giant patio door, a six foot high by six foot wide, beautiful patio door. And then I've got my office, temporary office set up here, right in front of the window so I can look out into the yard. So let's go out and see what we have outside. Okay, so here I am outside of the home. I've got a nice big yard here. I've put the casita off to the side of the building envelope so that somebody could purchase this lot and then stay in the casita while they build their home. If you wanna, if you're interested in property down here, I've got five items for sale. So get a hold of me on the comments and we can hook you up because great place to be. So here's the little casita home from the outside. There's that entrance door. Here's my little car. I got a little 2001 Kia, which uh, you pay a lot of money for, for a used vehicle down here because the, the new ones are, have a lot of tax on them and importing something is, is not very easy as well. And, cost prohibitive so you buy a good used car here pay a little more for it but you need a car in the Guanacosta area for sure so anyhow here's on to my my deck area got everything I need here I mean we're not living in the Ritz that's for sure but it's a great place to stay while the house is rented little deck patio area and there is that one item I just bought a couple days ago at at uh, price mark slash Costco nice big cabinet to put my outside stuff lock it up and have it out of sight out of mind just brought my golf clubs down this trip so get to do some golfing over at Hacienda Panilla and then you can see I got my little outdoor table here and a couple rockers thank you Rob and Carol for those little trade off and right down there in the valley is the other house the the home that's on Airbnb and being rented right now. So there you have a little tour of what I'm living in right now. In another video, we'll go down and take you down to the big house and do another little project down there where I bought a big gazebo from Costco Price Mart that we're gonna assemble because the old one kind of got uh, 
a little bit wind torn and, and, and rusty now and time to replace it. So anyway, thanks again for sticking around this long and checking out a little bit of Costa Rica and what it has to offer. I'm in the Guanacaste area, just west of Santa Cruz, near a little town called Paraiso. I'm exactly one mile from the beach, beautiful Playa Blanca, down there to the west, of course, and very close to one called Junquial, and then Playa Negra, Avianas, and right down to Tamarindo are all in a row here. So beautiful part of the country for, and the weather in the wintertime, which they call their summer, flawless. You always have beautiful, warm temperatures. A little problem we do get is the wind in January or February. If you ask 10 people, they'll give you a different answer when the typical Papagayo season is. But that's when, uh, because the sun is in the northern hemisphere, most of the low pressure systems are down in the South Pacific. And so you got high pressure on one side. We are not an island, so please keep that in mind. Too many people think Costa Rica is an island. It is not. So we're on the little isthmus between, uh, that links between Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and then to Colombia, all joined, then down to South America. So those winds, they come from the high pressure side on the Caribbean side, and they blow over the mountains and out to sea on the west or the south side here into the Pacific. So that's why we get some winds, but uh, they're all actually kind of welcomed most of the time because it is so hot in those winter months, or our winter months, and there's summer months. So anyway, Thanks for watching. Tune into the next one. We'll do a little bit of a project of some kind, but again, I will show you around a little bit of what we have going on here in Costa Rica. Thanks for watching. Terry Peterman, the Internet Electrician.